Jason again. Good to be with you, and uh, let's switch gears just a little bit. I love all the visiting. Uh, let's keep that going, but I'm going to guide and direct it slightly here. So, um, we have, uh, how, how about this for a title for the circuit visitor to come and let's visit. Yeah. So the idea of uh, being a circuit visitor is that you really do go out and, and visit the congregations. We have eight in Sioux Falls uh, of our circuit. And what does that even mean? Basically, we have the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, the U.S. Uh, president Harrison is our synod president. Then our synod is broken down into districts. We are of the South Dakota district. And the president, Scott Seiler, is our president. And then each district is broken down into kind of geographical locations. Uh, Sioux Falls is definitely the closest together. I think the furthest we might have to drive would be like 10, 15 miles versus the middle of the state where they're driving like 150 miles from one congregation to the other. So uh, really we have a special place here. You don't, you don't see the, this many LCMS congregations in one city in very many places in the, in the country. So Sioux Falls is very special. Uh, you all are a very special part of the ministry in Sioux Falls, of South Dakota, of the United States, and of the world. That's what we want to focus in on today. So just in our visit, that's what we're doing. We just visit. Uh, that also implies uh, a little bit of back and forth. So just a heads up on that, and I do wait you out. I don't know how talkative you are, but uh, if, you, if you don't want to say anything, I'll just, just have to wait. You have to say something, so... All right, well, let's open with a word of prayer, and uh, we'll get started. Uh, and this prayer is printed up here, so why don't we all pray it? Are you guys hearing me okay? Yeah. Okay, very good. Let's, uh, let's pray this together. Almighty and everlasting God, since you govern and sanctify the whole Christian church by your Holy Spirit, hear our prayers for all the members, and mercifully grant that by your grace we may serve you in true faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here's where it all starts. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is an incredibly bold statement. Now, who's the one making it? Credit given. Jesus. Now, think about what he's saying here. When he talks of the gates of hell not overcoming this rock, that means the daily temptation that we're so familiar with, whether it's something that our sinful flesh rises up and is ready to take part in, or whether it's something that just kind of sneaks up on us. Of course, that's included, and that will not overcome. But it's bigger than that. We're talking about, like, as Revelation tells us, uh, this demon who takes the form and shape of a multi-headed, fire-breathing, lying, 24-7 dragon. And why does he take that form? To scare you to death. I think it worked. If the devil were to come through those glass doors in that form, we would quickly disperse in terror what he's about. He's also a liar. So he demonstrates himself in this horrible, terrifying kind of a way to scare us. So that we would not fear, love, and trust in God above all things, but that we would be afraid of him. That's what he's all about. But Jesus boldly says, he overcomes all that. The devil wants us to think that he is here and Jesus is here and on that last day there will be this epic Lord of the Rings movie type of a battle where all of the saints and all of the evil are going to go head to head and who knows how it's really going to go. But Jesus boldly says he knows how it's going to go. And instead of some epic battle on that last day, he will call back from the grave to life. You and all believers. 
and with a word, he will give the final judgment to the devil, to all his followers, and to death itself. The gates of hell will not <coughs> prevail against our confession of faith in Jesus Christ. That is a bold statement, and there is only one person who can possibly make it. You know him. He is your Jesus. Let's see it in its context, and we'll discuss this a little bit. <clears throat> Would someone mind reading Matthew 16, 13 to 19, please? And notice uh, there we have the, the verse right in the midst of it. But this is, this is all about the ministry now, so someone read that out loud for us. So we're very familiar with that passage. Um, there's a lot of ideas out there about Jesus. At Jesus' own day, there were a lot of ideas about him. That, that's never changed. In the 2,000 years since Christ's life, death, resurrection, there's still a lot of ideas about who Jesus is. Maybe he's one of the prophets. Maybe he's somebody who has some teaching that we can listen to. And, and maybe a few of those things, if we applied them to our lives, our lives would be better. And that's all true, actually. Like, if you applied the teaching of Jesus to your life, your daily life is going to be a little better. Is that the extent of it? Not according to Peter. Or Simon, we should say. Simon Bar-Jonah. What is, what is that all about? Well, Simon's his actual name. Peter is nothing more than a nickname Jesus gives him. And it's stuck. But Simon Bar-Jonah. If you ever see, like, in the uh, Old Testament reading, or if you, like, if you hear of a name of somebody from the Middle East, that word Bar is son of. So what is this? Who is Simon? He is son of Jonah. There we go. So Simon, son of Jonah, you're blessed. Now what about Simon Bar-Jonah makes him blessed? What do you think? How'd that get in his heart? Okay. Uh, or specifically, look at uh, verse... Is it 11, oh, 17 there? You didn't learn this from flesh and blood, but from God. my Father who is in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes him pretty blessed. He has this wonderful gift from the Father in heaven. If the Father in heaven had not given Peter that uh, confession, would he have had it? No. Neither would you. This is all the work of Almighty God. This is what brings a congregation called Resurrection Lutheran Church together, the laity and the pastor. This is what uh, the Lord puts in the mouth of Pastor Asher to proclaim to you and for you to speak back. And it is a wonderful confession against which not even the gates of hell can stand. So this is where our uh, Catholic brothers and sisters get things a little off kilter. They're going to see this passage, this very same passage, and say, see, Peter is the first uh, pope. See, Peter has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It's right, it's right there. It's, Jesus has uh, given him this wonderful nickname and, uh, and establishing his church on Peter. He's establishing it on that gift 
that Peter was given. The confession of the one true faith in Jesus Christ alone. And so, Jesus starts talking about rocks and pebbles. What's the rock? The confession. Who's the pebble? Well, that's what Peter needs. So Peter becomes a chip off the old block. He's kind of like, like if you think, uh, I think probably out in the, by the church here, there's probably some rocks, landscaping, or you've seen that by house, right? That's Peter, and who's Jesus? This monstrous rock upon which everything can be built. Nothing is going to move it. So you've got this little tiny pebble compared to this wonderful, massive, monstrous rock. That's what Jesus is saying here. And we all become these little pebbles, these Peters, with that one true confession. It's your confession. How did you get it? How did Peter get it? How did you get it? It's a gift from the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that has established your church. That has established my church. That's established the Christian church. And we stand on then that one true rock. Everything that we do flows out of the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He died for us. He paid the price for our sins for us. He rose for us. He connected us to all of this. He is center, central to all of it. That's who we are. Now let's zero in on that uh, location of his church right here in West Sioux Falls. And why don't you tell me? What are some things you love about your church? This is the interactive part. <laughs> We're small enough that we know each other. Awesome. We know each other. Like names. Know each other's names, do you? Not family. Family? <coughs> cool. <coughs> what else? What do you love about your church? A lot of support. It sounds like that kind of goes in line with knowing each other, being a family. That's what families do. Good. What else? Proximity, the rock <laughs> Proximity is amazing. Nice. All right. Good. I think Pastor Asher walks here sometimes too, right? There we go. That. There we go. Yes. So we, we have a pastor here who is preaching from that rock, and there's never any question. There's not any shakiness to what are we, what are we going to learn, what are we going to hear from the pulpit when we're here. Awesome. Good. So we're a family. We uh, know each other. We're supportive. We're close by. We have the true word. What else do you love about your church? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the awesome secretary? All right, there we go, good. Nice. I stood up and he said that. That, okay, that's very interesting. So that's the other side of the coin here, right? So it's, it's wonderful to be very welcoming to ourselves and uh, very family-oriented, but somebody that's not already a part of that, you have been able to come in and you, you, all, you feel incorporated. Wow, awesome. Anything else? What do you love about your church? Nice. Very, very supportive. And awesome. I really appreciate it. All right. Very good. Supportive, good Bible study. Awesome. I'm going to shift gears slightly, but I don't think that much. What are some things that you are 
praying about. When you think about your church, when you uh, spend your time in the Lord with prayer every day and, uh, and you bring your church before him, what are some things that you're adding into that prayer? See, now I'm, uh, the first question was personal. This is even a little bit more personal. But I think this is a good one to discuss too. Yeah. Spend time in the Lord's Day dark. Okay. All right. So we've got a, a congregation, a, a church, and a school, preschool. All right. So, uh, so tell me more when you're saying the word well, synergy. Just looking for ways to complement each other. All more right. More. Okay. Nice. What else are you praying about when you're thinking about your church? Pray for pastor. Praying for your pastor. Awesome. You need that. <coughs> yeah, for anybody else that needs our prayers or anything. Yeah. Have them, uh, have them listed out right here for you. Yeah. Do uh, you guys take that with you? Uh, open up to that prayer page. Keep those folks in your prayers. Great. You need that. So specifically, his arc ministry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Think of a Lutheran school too. Yeah. Lutheran school. Yeah. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. That's grown pretty good in the, over the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. What goals uh, does your church have for the next several years? What what. Or what, what do you think are, are some good things? Like I'm thinking in five years, if Jesus doesn't come back yet by then, what would we like to be doing? First of all, amen, come Lord Jesus, right? But maybe, maybe please come before five years from now. But if not, and we're still here. church was always full, mm -hmm. and it wasn't either of those two weeks, and uh, it's, I know there was a lot of older people that went to the Mount Calvary that have passed away too, but um, I, I was just amazed at the low amount of It was few, fewer people. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay, sure. Yeah. They do have two services, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Sure, so maybe maybe there's a, a seat or two that we could fill. <laughs> Good. Why? Because there's a lot of students here that are shy of receiving <coughs> less church. And we have to have something we like to pray for that maybe Calvary could be increased. Mm hmm. Yeah. Why? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to be the annoying two-year-old and ask, okay, so why is that important? I'm just going to keep saying why. There are other things about two-year-olds that are wonderful. That one, after about five or six whys. Uh, gets a, one other thing also, I heard a long time ago that after people get through like the big confirmation type thing, they seem to fade away a little bit. Mm. Okay. So less of that would be good. You think that that is kind of in conjunction with yeah, what else? Sure, yeah. Okay. All right. Why why don't we want that to happen? Because they're saving the way from like you said after confirmation and and graduation and high school and and that it are they Well, let's ask that question. What do you think? Are they? If, if, I'm, if I'm just never in church, whether I'm just confirmation age or uh, I hate saying the word, but COVID kind of messed me up and I, I just haven't really been back or whatever my reason is, I just haven't really been back. Am I fading away from the faith? What do you think? Church 
Sure. Yeah. We're definitely fading away from our brothers and sisters in Christ of our congregation, sure. Yeah, I was asked to preach for four minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Okay, so these things are, that we're talking about are actually all related. And it, it's all back to that uh, Matthew question that, that we've got before us. Why do we care? I mean, it's pretty easy when we're thinking about our family. Like, I care because I love them. What's, what's the fear here? Heaven or, hell. Heaven or hell. That's right. Let's put it right out on the table. Let's say this thing. That's what we're dealing with here. It really is. And if I am falling away and purposely removing myself from the ways that the Lord promises to be at work, then he's not at work in those ways. I mean, that's pretty logical, right? Like, if I'm not taking communion, I'm not getting communion. I am. You see, here's, here's kind of the way to think about it. Your faith never just stays the same, ever. Your faith is doing always one of two things. It is either increasing or decreasing. Okay? Now, am I talking about your level of savedness? No, that's not what I'm talking about. You're saved in Christ. Done deal. His work. Now, I'm talking about the, the uh, how about this? Do you feel like after you have spent time, hmm, let's just think uh, you, you participate in a particular Bible study unit. So do you, I think like sometimes you have a whole book of the Bible that you're studying. Uh, do you feel like your faith has actually increased as a result of walking through that study, reading the Bible, worshiping on a regular basis? Has, have you actually increased your faith and your trust? Yeah, of course. Would you be more, have a stronger faith as a result of doing that versus not doing that? Yeah. See? Our faith is going one of two ways. Now, is it possible to lose it altogether? And the answer is, unfortunately, yeah. And guys, I know you. That's why you care. Because when Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all heart, soul, strength, and mind, you're like, yes. And when he says, love your neighbor as yourself, you're like, yes, I'm on with that too. And this is a big part of it, isn't it? There is a society and a world that is so fighting against everything good in Jesus, and here you have it. And even though you're, you, you may like be pushed back as a result of it or, or called into question or called names like hateful or some kind of an ism, still you uh, press forward because actually that person's life is more important to you than what somebody might call you. Is that speaking to your hearts a bit? Is that putting some words to your faith and worship? Yeah. I'm just drifting in this way. It's, and it seems like the goal, it seems like I'm not a board member. I'm just a volunteer that helps pay the bills and stuff like that. But when you say that, though, about the goal thing, people don't even know what our goals are. You know, and that's probably a good thing forward to instead of kind of staying with them for saying what are our goals. Okay. Right? Well, you tell me. So yeah. what are your goals? To me, yeah. Okay. Well, no, I mean, I think from time to time we have to do that. You know, in the parking lot, um, going towards the people. Yeah, well, and I'm not trying to... And I'm not trying to put any words in your mouth. I'm really, my whole point in this is sometimes this isn't something that we really sit around and, and talk a lot about. Well, 
this is a good thing for, hey, here's an outside dude coming in just saying, hey, what's it like here? What do you, what do you love? What are you uh, praying about? And what are, you, what are you looking forward to? Okay. Right side. Right side. Wrong. Okay. And uh, and then I'm back to being two and saying, why? Like, why would you want another sanctuary? Why would you want different? No, no. I'm I'm, I'm not saying those are or your goals. I'm just saying, it's the two parts, right? So here's some things that we think would be good. Why do we think it's good? And I think that always then ties back to our our other discussion. There are people in Sioux Falls. Do you know this statistic? There are people in Sioux Falls who don't know Jesus. Do you know what the percentage is? Take a guess. 40, 37. 40, higher. 70, higher. 30, 60. Not that bad. <laughs> 60%. In Sioux Falls City and Lincoln County. Uh, we're in Minnehaha right here, right? Yep. So uh, I'm just below 57, so I'm down in Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln, 60%, Sioux Falls uh, City, Minnehaha County, yeah, is in the, getting there, 60% neighborhood. Uh, don't know Jesus. So Lincoln County is what compared to Minnehaha? A little bit, yeah. And I mean, you can kind of think about that demographically. Built houses like crazy, but no churches. I don't even know, like, are there churches yet? I think a Catholic church maybe. But anyways, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Why do you not have a church north of 12th Street? North of 12th well, Street? I mean, besides the empty space. Hey, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Why would people, why, I, I mean, I understand why the school is like, you know, we got free land, whatever. Like, sure. Um, but at the same time, we absolutely have an unnamed board member in our halls with brothers and sisters. Yeah. That are going all over the place, and is there a, like there should be a grassroots effort to try for another congregation? Where like you said, where we're building schools and storehouses and infrastructure, and the way the people are built, go and we have to go where like the church is. Go where go out there to where they're at to invite them. So and I'm just kind of wondering if there has ever been the need to support the goal. Well, a lot of things have been batted around. So, like, here's a, you guys are, like, in the midst of that answer. So you're, like, one of the very last church plants in Sioux Falls. And how old are you guys? Pushing 30, right? Now, since, since you guys, there's also Risen Savior T. That's it. Uh, so do you know who your sister congregation is? You remember that? What's that? That's your mother, but at the same time that you guys were being planted, who who else was being planted? Oh, no, actually, I'm, what I'm thinking is out in Brandon. So, Blessed Redeemer, and you guys were planted about the same time. And then, and that was kind of it. Well, here's the thing. We had uh, folks, uh, pastors, lay people, and I guess I don't know how involved the district was in that, but uh, we definitely had the folks asking those questions, and uh, I think we're like, hey, we did it. And then we stopped. <laughs> so, like, that's the first part of the answer to your question. And I'm in no way trying to be critical. Uh, it's, it's hard work. I mean, to, to be an established congregation after nearly 30 years, such as yourselves, or such as Brandon, or such as T, that, that takes a ton of effort. It's a unique kind of a thing. And, uh, but it's doable. Obviously, it's, 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 it's
Hartford, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, so like you're speaking my language here, all right? So this is, the, as when I came in as circuit visitor, one of the things I talked with uh, my brother pastors about was, hey, what I'd like to see our congregations do is just set a goal to plant two churches in Sioux Falls. It kind of, I'm thinking about you guys and I'm thinking about Blessed Redeemer, two seems fine. Honestly, like, okay, so I've given you the one statistic of 60% non-Christian. Are, are you familiar with how many people are moving to Sioux Falls every yeah. single year? What's, what's the latest on that? 200,000 not pastors. It's what? I think we're over 200,000 right now. Right, but how many new people every year? So we're, as a total population, over 200,000. How many new people do we get every year? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the very technical answer of a lot to the tune of 7,000. Like, the size of bigger than some of our small South Dakota towns are coming to Sioux Falls every single year. Um, so... <laughs> If we want to go in a different direction than this, let me know. But uh, this is like you got me on a little a thing here. So you good with this? All right. Um, Pastor Seiler, our district president, a couple years ago at our South Dakota district convention, gave the statistic that with a church plant, at that time we had a church plant kind of going at the school, and we have a church plant in Belfouche, South Dakota. And he said, these were the last two communities in South Dakota of 5,000 or more people who don't have an LCMS congregation. How many people are we bringing into Sioux Falls every single year? More than 5,000. Those two numbers, just in my mind, I know it's just an arbitrary number that Pastor Seiler picked with 5,000, but still, we've got a, a justifiable number of people moving in to establish a congregation. That's my argument. It sounds like you uh, may be on board with that. All right, go ahead. I know Pastor, though. Um, I've been doing this for limited dates for a couple days now. Okay. But it seems like the pastor who answered his approach was, was offered by quite a few people in the church. More than once, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I do know what you're saying, yes. Yeah. 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 They brought up, but like you say, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, it is going somewhere now. Uh, so um, he had a really cool plan uh, that uh, we recently, so I'll get you kind of up to speed on what, what we do. So in the, uh, our circuit, the pastors get together once a month. We call it a winkle. I have no idea what that really means other than it's a mini pastors conference of just our pastors in the circuit. And we get together every month um, and we, we just kind of talk about things. Um, one of the focuses, I, I get to lead that, uh, one of the focuses and emphases that I like to do in there is where are we united? Where are, like what is um, resurrection doing that maybe uh, you might benefit from a couple of interests of people from faith coming over and uh, maybe you need a little help on something? And what's something that Memorial's doing that would benefit from a few people from uh, resurrection coming over. And is there a way for us to see our ministries not so just our own thing, but we've got a cool opportunity. Eight congregations in town, can we work together? That was a focus that I uh, really pushed uh, last year. Leading towards this question that you're asking, because I think we have to be in it together. Our congregations have to be in this kind of thing together. If we're going to be pushing forward in a way that I agree, I think that we definitely should be, of raising up new congregations. Why? There is darkness covering our city, and we have the light of the gospel. Uh, let's plant. I'm, I'm all for it. So that then brings us up to, we've only had actually one of these winkles this year, uh, back in September. We got back on this exact conversation. And Pastor Asher gave us uh, kind of his proposal that he did um, a while ago. I can't remember exactly the dates on that. And it got us excited. So, um, for example, Pastor Drevlo with Our Redeemer says, hey, you know, uh, I drive by, what did he say? Anyways, he lives up north, kind of in the Hartford area. But I think he said, I drive by Crooks every single day. What if I got something started there? And uh, my thing that I've been thinking is, all right, so we've got Faith Lutheran established as kind of the, the one north of 12th. Uh, Christ is over there, too. What if we move just a little west? We've got a, a kind of a 
maybe a little less socioeconomically status neighborhood right there that doesn't have a Lutheran <laughs> church. Uh, and all of us are kind of thinking, hey, yeah, this kind of makes some sense. It, then, I think you're right, you said grassroots. If, if this is going to be driven by the pastors, it's, uh, we get busy. So, sorry. It, it just, we have to have a lot of people who are like, yeah, this sounds great. And a lot of people saying, you know, why would we even consider this? And a lot of people agreeing that our city needs it. Our, the people here need this message that we have. And this is a way to do it. All right, so that's a little bit of the little bit of the history, but yeah, probably left some holes. So, the lay leadership institute. So, does everybody know what that is? Okay, uh, the South Dakota district puts to, has put together a wonderful training course series. I think it's twelve courses, ten or twelve courses. Uh, anything from how you teach the Bible. Uh, there's even a preaching class in there. Christian doctrine, uh, church history, basically classes that a pastor is going to take at seminary, uh, more for the lay, uh, for the laity. So it's not like you're not going to the seminary and having to read Greek. With the idea that there are some laymen and women who would like to learn a little bit more and be very comfortable and competent in um, maybe teaching or doing these kinds of things. So it's a training that our district provides and I think it's about three classes a year. Have you gone through it? Part of it. Yeah. Part of it? So am I right, it's about three classes a year? Uh, okay, that's fine. You, you can go through that and you then become bolstered. I think that that would be a, a tremendous um, way to, uh, gift to utilize. A uh, gift that um, we're using at Faith is I have a young man who said, I'm interested in the SMP ministry. Uh, anybody familiar with that one? Okay, SMP being specific ministry pastor. So he's taken seminary courses uh, distance. So he's a full-time firefighter while he's taking classes and while he's a vicar in our congregation. So he's got his hands-on training, all of this. Well, what's, what's the idea here? That now we've, we're going to have a guy ready when the Lord provides that opportunity for us. When it makes sense, when we're ready to go, we've got somebody who can jump in, preach, administer the sacraments. I think Lay Leader Institute can uh, help on that. It would be um, not quite the same intensity of study. So there's a, a lot of ways to get people qualified to, to get, get going on it. Yeah. Were you leading somewhere with, with those questions? Well, so there's where I don't like to put a lot of specifics, like here's the plan and everybody's doing it. I think we, I honestly, like my opinion on this is there might be a way that makes a ton of sense for resurrection that isn't going to make a ton of sense for faith. Why not allow the freedom to, to do it the way that it, it makes sense to do it there and the way that the Lord has gifted a particular congregation? That might be. Uh, hey, yeah, we're splitting the congregation in half. You go here, you go here. That would be a way to do it. Uh, another way would be just go set up a shop somewhere and start things going. Uh, another way would be uh, get to know people in the neighborhood and see who's uh, interested and start to get a core group there. Another way would be say to the district, hey, plant a church here and tell us what to do. There's just countless ways that we could go about it. Mm. Both, how it's been done successfully in different places at different times because it doesn't one way it does not fit all. Right. There you but go. It has been over in Scotty out there that has used the Lord to go really far there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it, it's not with the CTCR, uh the, but it is a synod. I'm I'm wrong in asking that. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. No, uh, uh <laughs> sent to serve is part of it. Um let's see. Remember, we had the guy from the district here in May, and he was coming talking to us about this very kind of thing. Um, 
he has, oh, I'm going to have to, I, I, that one's not coming to my mind here. Uh, but there, there definitely are resources, yes. Yep. And I think that guy that we had here in May would very much be willing to come and walk through. I think we needed to get just a bit further down the road, honestly, and, and kind of have some, like, resurrections idea. Hey, we're, we're in. We want to, we think we want to do this. Have him come and, and kind of talk. Here's our plan. Here's Faith's plan. Here's our Redeemer's plan. Here's Memorial's plan. And I think that'd be pretty fun, like getting everybody together. Just think of the things that we would come up with, the creativity and the way that the Lord's going to go to work and, and that kind of thing. Oh, pretty cool. All right, well, okay. Now you guys got me on that soapbox, so. <laughs> no, this is good stuff, though. That's, that's what we're a part of. That's, that's I, I love that. I love Sioux Falls and that we're so many congregations together and I love resurrection because all the things that you guys said that you love about it, it, it's obvious. Who's coming today? It's obvious. This is a family. This is a group of people who care about each other and a group of people who care about our community. Praise be to God. I'm with you. Okay, so um, part, of, uh, part of my presentation, I like to talk, and, and I, I've done this a couple of times already, is really I like to build up your pastor and it is so amazing that God raises up men such as Pastor Asher and calls them into congregations to serve. And, uh, and here he is. So um, here is a little bit about the pastor. This is, I'll just kind of abridge it. Um, this is after Peter denies Jesus. Jesus is resurrected. And then they're up in Galilee again fishing. And um, Jesus restores Peter for his, from his great fall. But notice what he's telling Peter to do. Feed the sheep. Tend to the sheep. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Yeah. Do you love me? Yeah. Do you love me? Well, Jesus has asked Pastor Asher that same question. And me. And you. So what's the work then that he gives to his pastor? Feed. Nourish. Tend. And don't be offended that Jesus is calling us sheep. That's a good thing when we have the great good shepherd, Jesus. And you've got a good shepherd here that's pointing you to Jesus. How do I know that? <laughs> the conversation we had this morning. That's how I know. Okay, so then um, what about the congregation? Well, here's, here's what Paul said about one of his congregations. And this was a troubled congregation, too. Corinth. Like in the middle of some of the like American today kind of uh, craziness going on in Corinth. Uh, now, Corinth is a city about the size of Sioux Falls, maybe a little bigger at this time. Actually, Pastor Asher has been there, so he can tell you way more than I can here. But um, the congregation may be about the size of our group here. That's the Christian church in Corinth. And that's the people that Paul cares so much about and he is expecting so much from. And these are, these are the kinds of things that, that uh, the shepherd Paul does for his congregation. I thank my God always for you because of the grace that was given you in Christ Jesus. That in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you. So that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Beautiful gift that the Lord gives of unity. It's a gift that he has given here. And it's a gift that he's given within our congregations in Sioux Falls. And we should never take that for granted. Not everybody has it. Uh, Corinth didn't always have it. So, is unity a good thing? Yeah, 
for Paul, who wrote this letter, like that's the whole point of 1 Corinthians. He's just constantly talking unity stuff. And he sees where the people are divided, and he's pushing them back. Hey, this isn't right. You're going doing your own thing. You're wrong. Get back. That's Paul's message again and again to the Corinthians. And so here, unity. Can we establish it? Here's the crazy part. No. Only Jesus does that. How has he established unity? One baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Unity in the body of Christ. I might just be the uh, pinky toe of the body of Christ, and, and you may be the left elbow of the body of Christ, but just because I'm not the left elbow and you are, that doesn't make me any less a part of the body of Christ. That unity is established by Jesus. All right, so we're, see, see where we're kind of going with this. We start with who are we? Uh, so here we are. Who are we? Um, who are we within our city? That's a conversation that came up naturally. Who are we within our circuit? That was a conversation that came up naturally. Who are we within our district? That's a conversation that came up naturally. Are these important questions? Yes. Next to, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? These are like at the top level of questions to be asked. Why? Because God told us to love our neighbor. And this is what that's all about. All right, I'll pause again. Getting all soapboxy again. Anything here? All right. Well, tell me a bit about what what are some things that you got going? We've heard Bible study. We've heard, uh, obviously, worship. We've heard daycare. We've heard school. Anything else that we should throw into that? What do you got going? Doesn't have to be big. Uh, we said uh, women's Bible study. That's kind of exclusive in a good way. Cool. Sounds exciting. Like in your personal oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yep. You must be an elder. I said you must be an elder. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. You know, kind of build up right now, except he's really looking for more to come and join because he has a pretty small group because a lot of our members have passed away. Mm. Yeah. You guys have your LWML Sunday? Nice. Collecting mites. God goes to work with those mites and millions of dollars collected and distributed to ministry here and throughout the country and world. Oh, it's awesome. I saw a sign out here for soup and pie supper. Sounds good. What's on, what's on the menu? Soup. soup and pie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> as soon as I said it, I knew. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Good. Hey, here's the bottom line, guys. You're the body of Christ. The Lord has raised you up and has blessed you richly. You're doing his good work. You are amazing followers of Jesus. You are his wonderful disciples. I'm, I'm proud to be a sister congregation with you guys. I'm proud to serve as circuit visitor with your congregation. And you guys are good. Praise be to God for Resurrection Lutheran Church. And for the 
desire to say, you know what, what else could we do? Uh, and maybe, maybe right now we don't have the time to do it. Does that mean never? Well, maybe not. Maybe, you know, we don't have to beat ourselves up or beat ourselves to death over these things. Sounds like you guys have a lot of fun doing a lot of cool things. Why? Because our neighborhood, our community needs us. We know it. And you need each other. You know it. That's why you're together. It's why the unity shines through so well. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. I want to kind of close it out on those thoughts there. You are the light of the world. How'd that happen? Well, you're not the source, are you? Think about the, uh, the baptism rite. You have the Paschal candle, right? And the individual being baptized has, do, do you guys do a candle for the individual? And where is that candle lit from? The big one, yeah. The Christ candle. That's where our light comes from. You have it. Now, here's the cool thing. It's the full force. It's as if Jesus' light were right here, right now, in you. You are the light of the world. Who else is the light of the world? Well, Jesus himself says, I am the light of the world. And then he turns around and calls you the light of the world. Wonderful. You have the same gifts that Jesus has. Why? There it is again. Oh, this is a good one. Why? For the people in our neighborhood, for the people in our city, for the people God brings into our lives, and the people he's already brought there. Don't skip over your families. You even you already talked about your heart with your family. Yeah, pray for your family. Share the word of God there. All of this together. And your family. Continue to come and worship. This is, this is how we show that unity. It's, it's an act of charity. And here is where you're strengthened in your faith. Here's where you receive the promises again of your holy baptism. Here's where you receive again the body and blood of your Savior Jesus. Why? Because you sinned and you need to be forgiven and Jesus gives it. And here is where you're fed again and again by your faithful pastor. And here's where you are for each other. Okay, yes. Yeah, and true. Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. All right. Well, another uh, quote from Jesus, and this is what we've been all about. I came to seek and save the lost. He sent you and me to seek and save the lost. Cool. Let's do it. Any uh, Anything else that anybody wants to say? Well, uh, for those of you I already know, uh, it's good to see you again. Those of you that were uh, just meeting for the first time, hey, good to meet you. And uh, if there are some things that our circuit or our district can be helpful to you in, or if you uh, hear all of this conversation, you're like, man, I am uh, John, right? I am right in line with what John's saying. I want to see us move forward on this. This is, this is what I want us to be about, okay? Now, obviously, your, your first ministry is resurrection. Uh, and then the community, how can we work together? Okay. So now you know me. If there's anything you want me to bring before the president, let me know that. Or talk to him, whatever. Yeah. But uh, we're here for you. Let's close out then with a word of prayer. And thank you guys again so much for, for allowing me to be here with you. Gracious Father, thank you for this time together with your saints of Resurrection Lutheran Church, thank you for the ministry that they've had here for nearly 30 years. Thank you for the family that this has become. Thank you for solid and strong worship. Thank you for missionary work with a, a preschool and a day school. Thank you for the new uh, members that are brought into the family. Thank you especially for that solid confession of faith that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Thank you for the promise that the, not even the gates of hell 
will defeat us as we stand on that one true confession. Thank you for each of the folks here who have uh, stuck around and uh, talked through some of the wonderful things that you have done, will continue to do. We pray that you would stir in our hearts to look and seek and bring that saving message of Jesus Christ into our community. Uh, we pray that you would continually refresh us in that heart of Christ, a heart for those who don't yet know him. Thank you for this time and bless us in our coming week. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. All right. Hey, thanks for setting me up on the soapbox thing there too. Well said, but hey, this is what you're thinking about. Great. God's blessing.